Welcome to the Symphony Workshop, I'm Gary Clark and in this recording I'm going to continue to show you routing tips and tricks in the Symphony 5 framework. If you didn't catch the first recording I'll post a link to that at the top of the screen, you should be able to see that now. In that one I covered annotations, route methods, route parameters, named routes and something called param conversion. In this one we're going to continue where we left off and I'll cover route grouping, route debugging and using named routes in order to generate URLs. In the meantime, and before I do that, let me just say that this channel was created for you, so if you signed into YouTube, please take a second to post your answer to this survey in the comments down below. Usual housekeeping before we get started, I record in high res so you don't have to watch on a blurry screen. Choose high definition if that works for you. And also if this is the first time on my channel, welcome. If you'd like to see more of my stuff, all you need to do is subscribe and click the little notification icon. So this is where we left off in our first recording. We have a product slug and a products route. But we can actually do this instead of writing products for every single route because we could have products of this that and the other you can actually specify it here by adding a group routing above the class name and so we'll set this to products and we can also give it a name prefix so if i put products underscore then that will get prepended onto whatever name i give my other routes so let's put that to use i just change this products route to forward slash and I change the name to list and that will give us the exact same result as what we're already seeing. For my products slug route I can just remove the word products and for the name all I need to say is show and that will give me products show. Over to the browser to check that out. Refresh, same result there. Let's change this route to just products and there you go, still working exactly the same as before. Okay, if you want to check out the routes you've got or you experience a problem, you can use this Symphony Console Debug Router. And there you go, there's all our routes. So we're just looking at, if we ignore the preview error one, that's not created by us, that's created by Symphony. But if we look at these two, so we have products underscore list, that's our first one here. And we have products underscore show. And we also have the methods that we specified. So as you can see here, we specified get and head and we didn't specify anything here. But if I change this and specify get and give it a refresh, then as you can see, the method has changed to get. Okay, just in case you didn't quite catch that, I'll also change these to post and put. And I'll go back, run debug router again and as you can see for the products list the method has been changed to post and put so that's pretty cool if you do get routing issues and you want to debug them please make sure this is the first thing you check because I promise you it will save you a ton of time now I'm going to show you how to redirect so this is redirecting from control method I'll add a um, new method and a new route for inventory and we'll just return a response which sort of illustrates that what this is is like a product list product inventory we need to give it some uh, routing so we'll call the route inventory so obviously we're using products as a grouping so this will uh, resolve to products inventory and we'll give it a name of inventory also which means the name will be products underscore inventory. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to redirect from this list route to the inventory route. So you might have a condition in your code which says if this condition is met, then redirect to this, this route. And this is how you do it here. Notice I'm passing the name of the route, not the actual URL. And this method comes from abstract control. It's redirect to route. Let's change this back to get, otherwise we'll get an error when we try and visit in the browser. So I'm just going to visit products, and there you go. Might have gone a bit quick for you, we'll do it again. But there's our message anyway, so I'll change the URL back to just products. And there you go, it's very fast, but hopefully you will have seen that. 
Let's take a quick look at the declaration of this method redirect to route. And as you'll see, as a second argument, it can take an array of parameters. So let's test that out. As a second argument, I'm going to pass an array foo equals bar. And I just want to make sure that that value is being passed to my inventory method when things get redirected to this route. So a small confession to make here, I actually took a pause and started working on this again without pressing record. In the meantime, I've added a Symfony Component HTTP Foundation request as an argument to inventory. And I call the get method of that request and I pass foo as a key. And there you go. When we go back to the browser and refresh, it redirects us and it also passes foo equals bar as the query parameters. And so I'll just clean these bits up. So this solution is something you would use if you're putting in some logic which says redirect to this route if uh, X condition is met or if it's just a temporary measure, you're just working things out. If it's going to be a permanent redirect, then I probably recommend doing it this way. So in config routes.yaml, we can create a route. So we're using the same name, products list. The path is products. Controller is redirect controller. And where it says route under the defaults key, that is the name of the route that you are redirecting to. We can remove these bits here. So permanent, we keep that as true. Keep query parameters. Yep, I'd like to do that. I've just pasted this from the documentation and the comments in it are very good. They guide you on how to set it up. Let's go back, give it a refresh and it's still doing the exact same thing. So we've set it up to behave in the exact same way as what we set it up in our controller method there. What I'll move on to now is named routes and I'll show you how you can use these to generate URLs, which you can do in the back end and also in the front end, which is what I'm going to do using Twig. Now, as my product controller extends abstract controller, it means I can do this, this render. And what that does is it calls Twig under the hood and says render this template, which I've called products.html.twig. I'll give this a route of home and I'll give the route a name home as well. Let's go and check out what that produces with our Digbook router. And there you go. It's got a name of products underscore home and the URL is products forward slash home. We need to create the template. So I'm going over to the templates folder and I just create a new file products.html.twig. This is going to be very basic. I'm just going to add a link and that's just to show you how we can use name routing to generate um, URLs. So the way we do it is this. I create a href and using the path method I pass in a named route and I'm using the products inventory. Let's go and give this a test drive, so products for slash home and there you can see our link. Give that a click, that takes us to the products inventory page because that is the named route that we used in our link. So how about if I do this, what if I change this uh, inventory URL to say list instead? What do you think will happen when I click that link? So let's think about this for a second. We've not changed the name of the route and our link is still using that named route. So surely it should still go to the same place. And that's exactly what happens. So here we are. It's hit our products list URL. So if we look at the code, we changed the list URL. But more importantly, we stuck with the same name, which is products underscore inventory. And that's what we passed in to our path method in this link and internally it's the route names that Symfony indexes and Symfony references. So I advise that you use your path generators and your URL generators because then all you need to do is pass in the route name. The route name will stay the same for the life of the application. So top tip, reference named routes instead of hard coding URLs and you could potentially save yourself a lot of headaches when things change. The way I like to think about it is like this. I'm still the same person with the same name as what I was 10 years ago, but I don't still live at the same address as what I did 10 years ago. Addresses are more likely to change than names. So that concludes routing. I hope you found it insightful. I enjoyed recording it for you. If you'd like to see more of my stuff and join a growing community, all you need to do is subscribe and click the little notification icon. I record new material twice a week and details of my schedule can be found on the discussion tab of my YouTube home.
homepage. I'll see you in the next one.